Hi guys, so I am headed to a book event and I thought I would vlog it. Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston is coming out today and there's a bookstore in Long Island City that is hosting her book launch. I'm super excited so I'm headed there and I'm taking you along with me. So if you guys don't know, I reviewed an ARC copy of this book a couple months back and really really loved it. I think it's fantastic. I will link the video where I review it up above if you want to check it out. But I'm excited to go see her in person and get my own signed copy. She now lives in the mountains of Fort Collins, Colorado with a collection of caftans and her poodle mix ever. Uh, Dolly Adler is the uh, associate editor of Mathematics by Day and blogger for Barnes & Noble Teens and LGBTQ Reads by Night and the author of Contemporary YA and NA at Every Spare Moment in Between. Uh, she's the author of the Daylight Falls duology, uh, Just Visiting, and the uh, Radley University... Okay. Bradley University series, a uh, contributor to the anthology's All Out, Radical Element, and it's a whole spiel uh, can opportunity. Uh, and, her, and the editor of the upcoming anthology is Hideous Heart, uh, Flatiron. She lives in New York City suburbs with her husband, son, and overstuffed bookshelves. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Um, or at least 
those of us who were like <laughs> that was the trying to be optimistic um, <laughs> yeah. thought you know so in my head I pictured it as this like you know deep esque parallel universe send up tongue in cheek loving parody of life under our first female president you know um, and you know that so it wasn't going to get that deep into politics and it wasn't going to you know, be something that really delved in that stuff. It was more of like a, a backdrop, you know. And then uh, November happened. But, you know, after that, I, I honestly like shelved it for like six or seven months. Oh, wow. Didn't touch it. Uh, didn't even look at it. Like, like opened it once and was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> And I just didn't know like how to do it anymore. I didn't know how to write it. I didn't, I couldn't and disengage myself from like the horror show enough to even picture what it would be, you know, and it was it suddenly the stakes were so much higher for what it had to be. Like suddenly it's like needed to do all of this stuff and I was like, I don't know that I am capable of that. Like I don't know if I can. And then I kind of got to a point where I was just like the saying like do all the good you can, all the good can, all the ways you can. I try to like be involved in so many different ways, but what has been given to me and like what I am good at is writing and is I felt that like I could do something good for people by channeling that into something that was like positive and productive, escapist and hopeful, and, and kind of reconnecting. I, and something that I needed to do was to reconnect with like the sense of hope that I had lost and the sense of like trust in like the moral arc of the universe and, and things like that. Yeah, so that was like I thought back to like the last time I was like really excited about um, politics and like what things could be. And I thought about when Wendy Davis did her filibuster in the Texas Senate. Um, I was like, yeah. Like, I was like, I remember being like, I was like entering California at the time. I remember, I don't know where Erin is, but she was there. Um, and and uh, we like sat and watched that filibuster for hours and just like cried. And um, and so that was kind of the inspiration for President Claremont was that moment. Um, and so like that's why she's like this like badass Texas Democrat. And yeah, and that was kind of like where it started for me. And everything kind of spun out from there. And there were a lot of a lot of things that I wanted to do with it, and that were really intimidating to try to do with it. And because I, because you also like you want it to be this like like better world, but at the same time, it's like so disrespectful to act like you know racism and homophobia and like these things like wouldn't exist if someone different was in the White House because like that's not mm -hmm. that's never been the case, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and so it was like, how do I strike that balance of it being like realistic and not like salt in the wound? And at the same time, being this like hopeful, like quarter turn of reality into something that you can engage with and, and it makes you feel hopeful. It makes you feel like, ah, eh, like it might not be all that bad forever. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of where it started. I feel like you did pretty good at that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> into my second question, which is you see a lot of creators talk about how under the current administration, you know, marginalized creators, especially, yeah. um, have a tough time creating. So, how does that? Huh, how does this yeah. <laughs> change the like process for you? And I was going to ask how it changes the work you produce, but I see we got the answer to that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it definitely. It's like something that you think about every single day. You know, at least I do. I, I think that I've talked to my agent about this, about how like after the election. <laughs> words on paper and like that kind of fuels you sometimes yeah and um 
I mean, I went to the Stonewall 50 exhibit today at, um, at the New York Public Library, which, like, oh my god, just like me and a bunch of old gays just like crying. <laughs> 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 and, um, and, you know, like, at, outside it says, like, love and resistance, you know, and that kind of sums it up for a lot of people who are creating right now, which is just resisting through, like, just defiant optimism <laughs> and like and and also defiant like and also like calling out stuff and, and, and trying to like do things that you know push boundaries and make things better. I wasn't expecting it to have to be in defiance of anything, you know, mostly. Um, and it, it evolved into what it is just by the necessity of the environment that we live in. Um, and and I'm, I'm proud of that. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I yeah, and it, it means a lot to me. Like like I look at it like when I think about like what marginalized people are going like of all kinds are going through right now. Um, I look at it as a sense of like we deserve to have like one moment where we can just be like joyous and like escaping into something that is like fun and frothy and. <laughs> And beautiful, and I might not be like I don't think I'm. I'm not like an academic writer. I'm not going to write like you know, like the thank you, like the most. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to write like the most world-changing theory on our political climate right now. But what I can do is write something that like the people who can't write that stuff or can, you know, do those things can read and like recharge and like have that moment. Um, and uh, that's kind of what I. I feel like I'm like pulling the water bottle. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like, it's more difficult. Yeah. So, again, it's, it all comes back to like, doing, like, playing to your own strengths and like, doing like, the good that you can do. Right. And that's, like, I felt like this was the good that I could do. Which is going to bring me into talking about that bio rap that I yeah. love so much. <laughs> but I also want to mention it's not just, uh, it's not a monolith even within the singular book. I don't want to get the quote wrong, so it's on. A little Oscar Wilde tip. Pop this you do that. <laughs> 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 Bisexuality is truly a rich and complex tapestry. It is. <laughs> it is, and it is in this book. Yeah. So I would love to know um, what was really important to you to include about bisexuality, sure. especially in the different ways that you represented it in different characters. Sure. Yeah, and I, that was like like one of my favorite things about it was like the range of it. Like Alex is like having this whole agonizing journey, but like, oh my god, like, like I need to, like, what's going on? And like, Nora's like, I really thought that deep for me, but okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and I, like, I think that's representative of, like, when I sit and, like, talk to my friends, and, like, like, you know, it's, like, a whole range of different kinds of queer people, and we all have had different experiences and different journeys to getting to that point. There is no one universal queer experience, and that's kind of something I try to get across. And like, that's why like I hate when I read something and there's like one like queer character and like group of straight people because that like never happens. <laughs> Like, 
want to portray bisexuality in a positive light, and like like the nuances of it, and like that it's like a cool thing you can be proud of. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and making it like the protagonist, and like getting in there with him, and like what he's thinking, and like how he's feeling, and how he processes it, and like, what his relationship is with it. Like people like from the outside have a hard time understanding that like queer people have like a relationship with their queerness and like that was something I wanted to show that's why it was like a whole chapter of the book of him was like what? <laughs> and so um that was pride number one <laughs> <laughs> you know so so yeah so that I mean that was like basically where it all came from for me yeah I love that <laughs> talked a lot about those things in the book now let's talk about the book book yeah the secondary characters yes. who are amazing oh my God. <laughs> So I will put out there that I will fight anyone for Zara. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Oh my god. Are you allowed to have a favorite? Well, here's the thing: is like anytime. So like, what I love about this book and what makes me feel um, like I've done my job right is like every time somebody finishes the book, they like approach me about a different secondary character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like so every like, oh my god like Stan Nora or like or like um like I have one person be like, can I get like an Indian Cash Buddy comedy? <laughs> or like stuff like that, and every single time somebody comes up to me about a different secondary character, I'm like, that's my secret fate. <laughs> that's like all of them. <laughs> and I love it. Or yeah. very yeah. true, actually. It's like, all true. Yeah. I don't believe it's all true. I mean, like honestly, like Lena knows Raphael Luna. But boy! <laughs> Oh my god, like all of them. I mean, like, <laughs> sometimes I pick 
picture like 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 um, like Cash and Amy as like a children's book where he's like a, like a giant like Saint Bernard and she's like oh, like a little Pomeranian and like, <laughs> like, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I mean like when yeah. you really get into diversifying. You're yeah. Oh yeah. And, like when I when I'm writing a break in the children's book market, like it's on. You know. <laughs> um, there's so much stuff that did not end up in the final book that like I mean it, the the first draft of this book is forty thousand words longer. And yeah, it was, um, so there's so much that was on the cutting room floor that I feel like could be fodder for something at some point. I mean, like, yeah, if I had my dream world, they'd all have their own, like, Netflix series. <laughs> Everyone's dream world. Yeah. So we will talk more about your characters later, but I yes. want to pick your brain about yeah. something also near and dear to my heart, which is new adult. Yes. Oh my God. That was what I signed up for your newsletter to hear your Yay. thoughts. Um, so you talked about kind of what new adult is to you, which I think a lot of well, I don't know how many of you are bookish, but I find nobody who doesn't like follow publishing really closely knows what it is. Sure. So, yeah, it's time for you to explain what it is to you. Woof. Yeah. Um, and why you think characters in their twenties generally get shafted. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, okay. So, I feel like uh, um, when I think about new adult, it's like the year after I graduated college, and I didn't have a real job for like the first year. Um, because journalism, and <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, <laughs> um, and yeah, and I was like waiting tables, and I was like, what's going on with my life, and like, who am I, and like, existential crisis. It's like this nebulous like bubble space, you know. It's just like, what's going on? I don't know. Like, it's it sort of sets you up for who you're gonna be as an adult, and like, it's also like when like some of the most important things in my life happened to me, um, and so. I'm fascinated by that moment in time. I think it's like this beautiful moment of flux that so many things are happening and you're figuring out who you are in a different way than when you were a teenager. Like when you're a teenager, you're like, this is who I am. This is who I am. Like, like this is not a faith. And, um, and then like you go into like your early to mid-20s and you really start to stumble into who you're going to be, you know? And that's fascinating to me. It's, it's so interesting to me. Um, to write in that space and to play around in that space and to like throw things at characters in that space and see how they do it. There is sort of like, I think that new adult struggles with is like a lot of people only see it as like new adult erotica, like Fifty Shades of Grey kind of yeah. stuff, which is not what it should be in my opinion. <laughs> and um, and I think it's really limiting and, 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 and I don't mean anything negative towards people who do write those things because like I have friends who write that, they're incredible writers. They're like doing the work and they're awesome and they're writing into an age group that is not like in my opinion being invested in enough in a traditional sense. But like to me, I'm not interested in writing erotica, <laughs> like it's not what I want to do. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, and it, it I don't want new adults to be put in that box. Mm -hmm. Um, like if I could have my like very big make a wish on a genie and like that would like I could get whatever I wanted, it would be that there would be this overstuffed shelf of like people who are, you know, finishing college and trying to stumble through life and figure out who they are that kind of borrows some of the things that people my age, like in my late twenties, um, people my age love about new adult, I mean about young adult, which is it's fun and there's a voice that is like not taking itself too seriously and um, and, you know, it's kind of wacky and dingy, there's like hijinks and things. Um, because I feel that adult either skews like pulpy or literary. And, um, and new adult kind of gives you more room to play around and have more fun with boys, not take yourself seriously. And I mean, like, the biggest mistake you can make as an author is like, take yourself seriously. Because <laughs> you, you like, you're just too seriously. Like, you have to make life really hard. <laughs> you have to have fun. Like, that's like, like, Everyone should just have more fun. <laughs> like that's what new adult is to me. Is it's just like there's no real rules to it. It's just like that mid twenties, early twenties. What's, it, what's interesting to me about romance in this age group is that like this is the first time that like when you are looking at someone, you're like, am I gonna marry you? You know? And um, and like that is so interesting. Like the stakes get higher suddenly, and it's like, how do you process what those stakes are? You know, and like for Alex in the book, like the stakes are like so astronomically high. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, I mean, like I love like what new adult could be, and like I picture like like new adult rom coms being like filling this void in the market for like 
this whole, like, honestly, that's what millennials really want to read, you know, and that's, like, why the millennials, like, turn to other ways to read things, you know, is because they're not seeing that on the bookshelves and stores, you know, so, yeah, I would be so stoked if, like, like, five years from now, I, like, couldn't, like, cram another book on that shelf of, <laughs> like, fun, like, new adult rom-coms. That would well, make me so That's happy. a really nice thing about your stone, well. <laughs> So when I published New Adult, um, but years ago, and um, the way to do it was to self-publish. Like that yeah. was just gonna do better than if you traditionally published. And then this came along, and I was like, oh my god, I can have faith again. Yeah. Like not even for my own books. I don't care. I just want to know I'm gonna be able to find them and yeah. read them. And I love that someone took it. And I know you didn't have the smoothest process in those no. terms. If you want to share a little about well, that, but not like not not bring anyone down. It happened. As, as, as yeah. Let's well, keep that in mind. But. I mean, it was definitely like I went back and forth before I even queried it of like, should I just like redo this whole thing and read it down? You know, because like I I was like probably a safer bet that way. It's such an annoying um, thing to have to consider. Like, well, when you are that age, you can't just beat yourself down when you feel well, like it. And like I felt like there were so many things like months to take off swearing. Um, uh, I I really felt like it was what it was supposed to be. And it was like right at that cusp that it was supposed to be at, and that was it was so integral to the plot and the themes. And like the age that Alex is at in the book, like I didn't feel like I could age him down and it be ethical for him to be like the focus of like people's fixation in the country. You know, like if he was like seventeen, I feel like mm -hmm, this is weird. Yeah, that um, was super weird. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and so that was why I kind of it was like he's like twenty one. He's like kind of choose, like, he's, like, picking up the tabloids, like, look at me, look at me, you know? So it's, it's a little, it's a different kind of tone, and I felt like if I had aged it down, it would have just gotten weird, you know? I mean, I was really lucky to have Vicky, um, who is my editor. Yeah. Yeah. Side in a city you don't even live in or <laughs> from. No. What's been the coolest part of the debut process? Oh my god, I mean, okay, Taylor Jenkins Reid blurred um, my book, and I got so many wonderful blurbs from so many authors that I like idolize and look up to and like, admire. Um, but like Taylor Jenkins Reid, like, I mean, like, I don't tell y'all I cried reading Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> like, you know I cried reading Evelyn Hugo. Um, and so, like, that was a really cool experience. Every blurb I got made me, like, oh, my God, this is, like, I'm, like, a real person. I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm just everything about it. I mean, honestly, going to the Flat Earth building is really cool. <laughs> it makes you feel really fancy. Um, yeah. I, yeah. You want to visit. You got to do it soon. <laughs> honestly, like, when I opened the box of, like, my author yeah. copies, that was, like, a huge moment for me of, like, oh, this is, like, Real. Like these are real books. Um, this is like really, yeah. Like wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a huge moment for me. And then just like, honestly, like I don't typically, I don't read a lot of reviews. I like if they're sent like directly to me, like I'll I might read. Um, but anytime somebody sends me a review where they just talk about like how much it meant to them on a personal level, is like incredibly cool to me because that's why I did it. You know, and I, I wanted to do something that would speak to people on a personal level. Not just be, I mean, obviously I wanted to be fun and it, like, like frothy and tropey and cute, but also something that, like, engages with people on that level. And that's, like, the most gratifying thing, you know? So, I mean, yeah, like, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember not even being able to review it. I was just like, why did this book make me cry I'm so sorry. many times? It was my whole thing. I, like, I didn't like, even know how to talk about it. I have to tell you, though, that's like my favorite thing to do is make people cry. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bisexual representation in adult books sucks. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. I like to make people laugh, make people cry, make people yell at me. <laughs> um, speaking of cool things, um, what am I allowed to ask about them? Oh my god, okay, so if, if you have I always get in trouble for like things that authors aren't allowed to talk about, and I'm like, so, yeah. and then I get like, editor glares, so, <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of no dog in this fight, like, she's yeah, like, she's like, ooh, I want to hear it, no, <laughs> like, well, people already well, heard there. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so I can't really talk about too much, but I can talk about the process that led up to it. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, uh, I mean, like, I talked to producers, I talked to studios, um, Amazon, like, came to Fort Collins to take me to lunch, <laughs> which was, I, I'm sorry, um, here's our brewery. <laughs> such a mind-blowing experience, I still don't think I have processed that it really happened. I'm like, cool, that was like a fun fantasy that I had. Um, but what I'm, I'm really excited about it because I'm like, I'm so excited about working with Berlanti, I'm so excited about working with Amazon. Every single person I spoke to and like the reason I chose to work with them um, was because they're so committed to preserving like the diversity that's on the page, they're so committed to like the integrity of, of the project and uh, the authenticity of the project and what it can represent for people and what it can mean i mean like there's never other than like love simon which was really more geared towards teens there's never really been like a mainstream big studio queer romantic comedy that you know has been like big like commercially made theatrically released kind of thing um and so and every single one of them is like we want to do that we want to like that's amazing yeah and and it's and it's so exciting to me and i just like i get like so like, emotional and excited about what it can be and what it can mean, and um, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. I mean, obviously, like the bad news is like when you sign an option, it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's gonna be for me. <laughs> so like, like, like certain <coughs> deals, you know, you wait and see where it's gonna, it's gonna go into production and things like that. And so like that's why I can't really speak into like what it would be if it went into production because like I can't. But you oh, fan casted it, right? I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I mean, like of course, like when I wrote the book, I was like, like yeah, Connie Britton is President Claremont in my book. I mean, Taylor was president. And then, like, yeah, like when, like, like in my head, like Oscar Isaac is like Raphael Luna, but. <laughs> anything in the future and I really can't speak into a lot of it but um, if it does go the way I would like it to go I think you guys are gonna love it and I think oh, it's yeah. gonna be a really cool thing. I'm so excited. Yeah. I wanna be. Before I keep babbling, does anybody else have questions? I don't wanna overly dumb any question cinematic universe timeline <laughs> <laughs> of books. Um, is Taylor Swift did she come out with her latest <laughs> single or no? <laughs> Yes. I mean, like, well, it, there's like there's one thing I don't like about this book is that I do think there's one dated joke in it, which is about Taylor Swift's Fourth of July parties when she no longer throws. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, in the in the um, cinematic universe of me, um, she still throws those parties because I would like that joke to not suck. <laughs> first read this, there yeah. was a lot about it that felt really familiar because it had the sensibility of a lot of original fiction that I had read online. Uh -huh. And I wonder if at all how that, that, did you grow up in that? How did it play into it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a leading question, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I mean, I'm 
cars. <laughs> and, like, who among us has not yes. read many a, well, you haven't read your fanfiction, don't lie. <laughs> um, no, I mean, of course, I was like 11 years old on the Nickelodeon message boards reading Rocket Power fanfiction. <laughs> with millennials is because it kind of speaks to that same tone and that same sensibility of, of writing. So yeah, I mean, of course, everybody has. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wait, I saw Kiki. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> no question. If your characters committed crimes, what would they be? <laughs> I mean, someone said too. I think. Some of them textually do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, disrupting the peace. Where do I start? I mean, uh, I, I mean, like, Henry, well, no, he wouldn't break a bowl. No, he's like, um, he's like the Amy Santiago of this. <laughs> <laughs> not really the rules are made to be broken. Uh, but I mean, Alex, I mean, like, public intoxication, like, uh, <laughs> decent exposure. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, streaking, like, he could do it all. Like, I'm sure he has done some of it. Uh, Nora, um, I'm sure would compromise some kind of confidential information of some kind. <laughs> June wouldn't break the will either, honestly. Henry and June are very similar in that they're both, like, sticks in the mud sometimes. <laughs> they're uh, classy. I mean, like, I think that June did get up to some stuff when she was, like, in college that we don't get to see. Um, like, in my head, she was, like, kind of, like, doing some breaking and entering on her college campus, you know? <laughs> doing, like, getting the stories, I like, you know? Right. And then, I mean, of course, like, like I said, some people do textually commit crimes in this book. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I love that question. Thank you. You can go back to me, I got more. Yeah. So I know music is a big thing for you and your characters. Yes. Want to share a little bit about your characters? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we can so, all judge who's is the best. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so when I like, I mean, a lot of you guys like have seen like your playlist that I posted online. Yeah. Part of, I'm like a like, very musical person. Like I think that way. And so part of like unlocking characters for me is, you know, when they listen to like what's on their, like, I almost said iPod. <laughs> <laughs>
and I like the idea of them each having like one of the houses, like complete Aww. before. Like, left all four. Um, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that makes for a really balanced cast too. Yeah, I like it also. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, what does like a writing day look like for you? Well, um, <laughs> it also say. It does sometimes. Um, it really varies. Like honestly, I write full time now. Um, I live in. You don't know, I live in Colorado, which they just said, and I work sort of from home, um, and so like, yeah, most days it's like you get up and um, shotgun a coffee and, you know, hope for the best. Usually, like, I try to, like, the night before, like, make a to-do list of, like, this scene or, like, this, like, figure out, like, what needs to happen next in this moment and try to start with that. Um, I have, like, I have, like, extreme ADHD, and so if I don't have some kind of game plan, nothing will get done, and what does get done is going to be, like, yeah. completely unreadable, you know? <laughs> Do you have um, tools that you love? Yeah, um, I mean, I I use, honestly, like, thank you, Google Suite, for my life. Um, <laughs> I use, like, Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Keep. Everything. That is. <laughs> yeah. I do everything that I do. I, I did, I bought, like, this gigantic folding screen for my room that's, like, chalkboard, and my entire plot for my second book is literally, like, scrawled on there like I'm a serial killer. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, I have, like, serious ADHD, so, like, if I don't have it, like, in a structured outline that I can read, like, it is just never getting out of my brain, you know? Um, I have to, like, force it into a form that makes sense. And so that's why I'm, like, hardcore... I could never be a pantser. Ever in my life could I write by the seat of my pants. Ever. It's like outline or die, but I'm gonna do it in like the most chaotic way possible. It's gonna be like, I have an outline and then I look at it and I'm like, that's what I feel like writing today. And it's just like whatever hits me and like it's all completely out of chron chronological order, um, which is cursed. And, <laughs> and then I like eventually end up like having to quit in the chronological order and then I go back through and I'm like and all of this because the tone is wrong and it's like going up and down and um so yeah I make I like to make it as difficult for myself as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm joking. I mean it's just how my brain works. And so I like literally I am like at the mercy of like how my brain works mm -hmm. and like trying to work with my own brain. But it works out for me. <laughs> it's much more productive than working against it. Yeah, yeah. So some questions about your characters in yes. relation to you. Yes. It's the apocalypse. Okay. Oh, Who's your buddy? Oh, and why? Nora. Uh, <laughs> Nora, she's Nora not, Zara. she's not gonna, sorry, I'm Zara, no, Zara. Zara would be a good one too, but, well, the, for similar reasons, Nora is not gonna let some random into our group that's gonna get us all killed, like, in group. <laughs> 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 Nora is, like, extremely practical and extremely, like, smart and, a, like, a strategist, and, like, will make sure that things are Like, yeah, she's not going to do some, like, dumbass mistake that's going to get us all killed. Like, she's just not. Like, Alex is going to, like, be like, I can save them and, like, run out of the group. And, like, <laughs> when we're, like, we are all, our cover's blown and we're all dead. You know? Um, and, yeah, I mean, or, like, Ellen Claremont, I mean, like, obviously. But, like, Nora. <laughs> she'd also be, like, really entertaining. And then, whereas, like, Ellen Claremont would be, like... We need to talk about our rations. Like, <laughs> 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 we need to talk about how these are being distributed. This is not ethical. Like, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's I think. Yeah. If your characters had riders, like only green M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What would they be? Yeah. Um. I mean, I mean, Alex has demands. Like, he will not accept barbecue from anywhere other than Texas. As someone who lives somewhere with like no good barbecue right now, we're grateful. You know? <laughs> um, I'm actually going to Austin next week, and I've literally just been looking forward to the barbecue for like weeks. Like, I'm going to go full right? <laughs> yeah. like, just, like, I mean, June has like a very specific palette of candles that she will accept. Um, <laughs> like, like we, we care about an aroma, and so like, like that would be a factor. And she would also demand like. Um, no, I feel like she would, well, she definitely, she needs, like, uh, the latest tabloid off the newsstand of, like, you know, all of, of the big ones. She needs to keep abreast on her world news. <laughs> um, and, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Henry, um, oh, 
God, he's so uptight. Like, he wants so, <laughs> so many things. He's like, I need my jump cakes. I need the, this particular brand of Earl Grey that I will not budge on. Um, and like 2% milk, but not 1%, and not whole, and not scam. And like those kinds of things. Um, honestly, I, he's the one I at least want to work for because, like, I mean, like, he's a sweet baby, but like. <laughs> um, He's a prince. I, yeah, like I feel like the chillest one would be like Peds, who's just like, I do want fifteen peacocks, but I don't care what color they are. Sold out of 